Hi, my name is Methat El Masri. Today I want to talk to you about Electron.net and the title of my presentation today is Electron.net with ASP.NET, MVC and Entity Framework. In a nutshell, what we're going to achieve today is that we will convert an ASP.NET application into a desktop application that is deployable on all of the three popular operating systems being Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. So let's get started by asking the question, what is Electron? Electron is a very popular framework for creating native applications with web technologies like JavaScript, HTML, and CSS. It takes care of the hard parts so you can focus on the core of your application. The website for Electron is electronjs.org and this site has everything you need to know about Electron. Electron uses Chromium and Node.js so you can build your applications with CSS, HTML and JavaScript. It is also open source hosted and maintained by GitHub. It's also, as I said, a cross-platform framework that's compatible with Mac, Windows and Linux. Some notable products that have been developed using Electron are Visual Studio Code, which we will be using in this tutorial, Facebook Messenger, Twitch, Slack, Figma, and much, much more. What about Electron.net? What is that? Well, it's a wrapper around Electron that allows you to embed ASP.NET Core web apps. It's an open source project that allows .NET developers to invoke native Electron APIs using C Sharp. It's got command line interface extensions that facilitate building and launching apps for Windows, OS X, and Linux. The prerequisites needed in order to use Electron.NET for wrapping ASP.NET Core apps is simply Node .js and .NET Core 3.1 and later. In today's tutorial, I will be using the current version of .NET, which is .NET 5.0. The website for the open source project is github.com electronnet slash electron.net. Here you can see that the project was created by Gregor Biswanger and there are instructions on how you can go about using this. So some of the things that I'm going to show you are already documented here. So the agenda for this tutorial is to create an ASP.NET Core app, electronize it, in other words, run it as a desktop application under the Electron framework. And later on, we're going to add some database entity framework functionality. Use some of the APIs that Electron.net provide us with in order to create message boxes, dialogues, and app menus. We will also add a chart with a third party control. And eventually, we will deploy our Electron application as a desktop application, which allows us to install it in our operating system and also uninstall it. Since I will be needing a database, what I'm going to do is create a container that has the Northwind database running. Now the Northwind database is one of the sample databases of SQL Server. So this command here will start for me the Northwind database and expose the database server with port number 1444 to the host machine. So let's hit enter here and start this container. Now that the container has started, if I type docker ps, I will see that my container containing the Northwind database is running and I can access it using port 1444. Let me first create an ASP.NET MVC app. So I'm going to make a directory and I'll call it electron ef. Let me go to that directory and create a new .NET MVC app. Now there are some tools that we need and the first tool that I need is this Electron CLI. So I'm going to install this tool globally on my machine and as you can see I already have that installed. Another tool that I need is this .NET ASP Net Code Generator which is this one here and I'm going to also install that globally. Again, this is already installed on my machine. And finally, 
I need the .NET EF tool and I will try and install that globally. And of course I have it already installed so I don't need to do it. There are some packages that I need. I need these three packages for database and entity framework capabilities. I need this electronnet.api and this is so that my ASP.NET application can integrate with electron.net. And the third package I need is C1 ASP.NET Core MVC. This comes from a company called Component One, and it allows me to use some of their third party components. So let me take all of these packages, copy this code, and paste it in the terminal window so I can install all of these packages in my application. Now that I have all these packages, let me open up my code in VS Code. So I can just type in code dot and it should open my project in VS Code. The first thing we need to do is to go into our program.cs file and there is some code that we need to add here, right at this spot in the create host builder method. And the code that we need to add are these two lines. The second line is optional, but the first line allows you to integrate Electron with your application. So I'm going to take these two lines of code and stick them in here. Of course, we have to resolve use Electron. So I'm going to hit control dot in VS Code and it will add this using statement. The next thing we need to do is go to our startup.cs. In our startup.cs file, we need to add this statement inside of the configure method. In fact, it should be at the very bottom of the configure method. What this does is it starts your web application in an electron window. I'm going to take this code here and find my configure method, which is this one here, and add this code at the very bottom. And of course, we have to resolve this electron class. That's it, folks. At this point, we have electronized our ASP.NET application. Let me make sure everything is saved and everything is saved because I've set my autosave in VS Code. So I can come now into my terminal window and first step is type in this command electronize and init. Now what this electronize init does, it's a one-time command that creates a manifest file named electron manifest.json and adds it to your project. Let's do that. There's a positive message saying everything done, happy electronizing. And if you go into your project folder, you will see that there's a file here called electron manifest.json that looks like this. And so this is the glue between your application and electron.net. To run our electron application, all we need to do is type in electronize start. Now, the first time you run this, it's going to take a little bit longer because it's doing a lot of work in the background. Don't forget that Electron is a JavaScript application. It runs under Node. And so a bunch of compilations and Node processes are running at this point. You can see some NPM commands are being run here, like NPM installed, which downloads the Node packages that are needed for Electron. Be patient, even though this may take a long time, it's only the first time that it takes this long. Thereafter, if you run Electronize Start again, it will be much faster. The end result is you get this application running and this is your Electron application. You can see that your ASP.NET web application is now running inside of a desktop application. This is our desktop application. If I click on File Exit, it will close. By the way, even though we have turned our application into an Electron application, we can still run it as a web app. So if we do the traditional .NET run, the application will run just like a web application. So here we have a hybrid application that runs as a desktop application and also as a web application. So if I go into my browser and type in HTTPS localhost 5001, my application runs as a normal web app. I'm going to stop my web app and let's make our app more interesting by adding some database functionality to it. We started off by running a Northwind database in a container. Now I want to reverse engineer the classes that will enable me to communicate with that 
Northwind database. So I will do that by running this .NET EF command. This is the tool that I installed at the very beginning. And this command allows me to talk to this database represented by this connection string. And the connection string, you can see here that the server is localhost running on 1444. As I said earlier on, our database is exposed to the host computer using localhost 1444. The name of the database is Northwind. The username is SA, which is the super account. And the password happens to be this. This is the password that was used when that image was created for the Northwind database. Now, there are two tables that I want to reverse engineer, and they are the products table and the categories table, and the context class that I'll be creating is Northwind context. So let me take this command, I'll copy it and bring it over here and execute it. Now we get some warnings. The warnings are not that serious, so we will just continue moving on. Now going back to our application, you will notice that there is a folder called NW and there are two entities, category and product, and there is the context class right here. And the connection string is visible here. In fact, there is a warning. One of the warnings that was displayed earlier on, which is the warning here, is basically saying that it's bad practice to have your connection string embedded into your source code. We will delete this entire onconfiguring method because we don't really need it. Instead, we're going to put the connection string inside of the app settings.json. So this is the connection string that I'm going to add to my app settings.json. I'm going to copy this and put it right here at the very top. And now that I have my connection string in app settings.json, I can really close this file. I don't need it anymore. And I also can close the Northwind context. I don't need that either. Next, we need to add this statement into the configure services method in startup.cs. And this basically associates the connection string, which is called NW, with the context class and makes this context class a singleton that's accessible through dependency injection on all other classes. So let me take this code here and paste it inside of the configure services method in startup.cs, which is right here. And of course, I need to resolve these namespaces. I don't need these files anymore, so I'm going to close them. Next, let us go into our home controller and access the database in this home controller. So I will add a helper method in my home controller that will be responsible for reading some data from the database. First, I will add an instance variable in the home controller that is the context class, the Northwind context class. And I will use dependency injection in order to have access to an instance of the Northwind context. I do that by adding this code here, Northwind context, and assigning underscore context to the argument that's being passed as a parameter right there. Now, I can start using the context class to access the database. To facilitate matters, I'm going to add this helper method called get products by category. And what this is going to do is it's going to get for me all the products that belong to a particular category. Now there's a one too many relationship between category and product because products belong to categories. This will give me the count of products by category. So let me take this helper method and paste it into my home controller and I can paste it anywhere. I'll put it at the very bottom. Let me resolve include here. I'm going to add an action method in my home controller called char. And this is going to get all the products by category by calling the helper method that we just created and add the result into a view back by the name of category product and it returns a view. So I'll take this, copy it and paste it anywhere inside of the home controller. So this becomes simply an action method. The objective of this action method is to generate a chart using the component one third party control. In order to use it, you need to add a tag helper to the views view imports file. So let's go to views and then you've got this view imports file. We need to add 
a line here so that we have access to this third party chart control. That's all you need to do. We can close this now. We need to have a view for this chart action method. To do that, we can use this ASP.NET code generator to create for us a view by the name of chart. We'll create an empty view in the output directory views home and we'll use the default layout. So I can take this command and execute it in my project folder and it will create for me the chart view. When that's done, we can go now to our views home folder and we will find this chart view. I will replace this code with my own code for generating a chart. The markup for the chart view will look like this. I'm going to give it a title number of products by category and display the title here. And this is the way we're going to use this chart control. As I said, it belongs to component one and this is the flex chart. Going back to our helper method, you will notice that there are two columns, essentially the name of the category and the count of products in that category. So if we go back to our code, the Y axis is going to be name and the X axis is going to be count. Data is going to come from this view bag category product. So I'll take this code and replace the code that's already in the chart.cshtml with this. Now, this chart, it has certain styling. In order to use the styling that the chart provides, we need to go to our main layout file and add some component one styling. And this is what it looks like. Just put this code in here. This provides our application with the styling and the JavaScript that's needed to run that control. You don't have to worry about how it works. All you need to do is just put these tag helpers in your layout file. Finally, also in our layout.cshtml, we will need to have a new menu item which needs to be inserted right in here. And the menu item will look like this. As you can see, our new menu item will be displayed as chart and the action method is also chart and it comes from the controller home. At this stage, we should be able to test our application. We can test it as an electron application or as a web application. So let's first test it out as a web application. To do that, we we'll just run .NET run. Let's now go to localhost 5001 and see if this works. We have now a new menu item chart. Let me click on that and see what comes out. And sure enough, we get our chart. If you go over confections, you can see that there are 13 products that belong to that category. Beverage is 12 and so on. Let's extend our application further. Let us have a save as capability so that we can save this data as a CSV file. So to that end, let us stop our server here and go back to our application. And in the home controller, I'm going to add another action method. And the action method is going to look like this. It's going to be called save as, and essentially I'm going to use the same helper method that I had before, which is get products by category. And I'm going to take that data and generate a CSV file. So I'm going to get the name followed by a comma and a count, and that will end each line. So each line will be the name comma count. Then I'm going to write the CSV file to the location specified by the argument that's being passed to this action method. So let me take this and put it as an action method inside of my controller. Now this save as action method is going to be called by a custom menu item that we are about to create. And that menu item only exists 
in the electron version of this application. So to build the menu system, it has to be done inside of the startup.cs file. So let's go to our startup.cs file, open this, and we're going to add a method called create menu inside of the startup.cs file. This create menu looks like this. And this is an API that we are using from electron.net. Most of this is boilerplate code. The thing that affects us the most is this menu item. We're going to create a menu item called save as, and we're going to instantiate a main window object. These are the options for the save as dialog. And this is what creates that dialog using the electron.net API. We pass it the main window that was created here and the options and it returns a result. This result represents the folder and the file name that the user has chosen. If it's not equals to null, then we're going to call that action method. And notice here it says bridge setting web port. At this point, you must realize that the port number that's used by electron.net is not 5001. There is another port number that's being used. Typically it's 8002, 8003, 8001. We don't know for sure, but this command will replace the port number with the appropriate port number that's being used by electron. And this is very familiar because essentially it's just calling an action method and the path is this result coming from the dialogue. The rest of the code looks like this. So I'm going to take all of this code and paste it inside of my startup.cs file at the very bottom or wherever you want it to be. And of course, some classes need to be resolved. We should choose electron net API entities for most of these menu items. And if we come over here, there's one more namespace we need to resolve, and that is using system runtime interrupt services. Now, this code here, it has to do with whether or not you're on a Mac. Now, this is the rest of the code, and it's pretty much boilerplate. You can see here that if you're on a Mac, then this is the way the menu item is going to be generated. Otherwise, on Linux or Windows, it's going to be using this code. As I said, this is boilerplate code and there's nothing much to do other than copy this and customize it for your need. The most important menu item is this one here. At some point, we need to call this menu and that's done by adding a call to create menu right inside of this statement here before the window is created. Let's see what has happened. Now that we are done, let us start our application as an electron application. So I can go electron eyes start and this is going to run as an electron application and you will notice that it does not take as long as it was taking before because it does not need to install too many of these npm packages and there it is our electron application is running again and you will see that under file we have our save as menu item let's see if it works so let me click on save as and of course the dialog shows up and I can navigate to a folder of my choice and give it a file name. So I'm going to give it the file name, let's say testdata.csv and save and I can exit. I saved my file right in this folder. You'll see here it is. This is the data that was exported. It has a title, row and the rest is the actual data. Now, the last thing I want to show you how to do is to generate a deployment file for Windows that essentially allows you to install this as an independent application in your operating system. And later on, you can uninstall it if you don't need it anymore. The command is this, electronize build and the target operating system is Win 
for Windows. There are other options for Linux and Mac. So let me just take this and execute it inside of the project folder. Now this will take some time because it's doing a lot of work in the background. When it's all done, if you go into your file system, you will find that under your bin folder desktop, you have a setup application that you can use to set up your desktop application onto your operating system. And let's do that and see what's going to happen. So I'm installing it on my machine and it just installs like a regular Windows application. After it installs on my machine, it's going to be installed under users, app data, roaming, Microsoft Windows, start menu programs. And here it is. If I run this application, here it is. It's just a desktop application. And if I click on my chart, it displays the chart. If I want to save as, I can save as again, just like it was doing before. And I can say, for example, test two here and save it as test two and everything works. I can exit my application and I can uninstall it if I don't need it anymore. On Windows, I can go into my add remove programs and search for the application which was Electron and here it is. I can uninstall it and it's all gone and there it is deleted. I hope you found this tutorial useful and I'm looking forward to hearing of some killer applications that you're going to build using this capability where you can build an application, a web application, or alternatively, you already have a web application built on ASP.NET Core, and you can transform it into an Electron desktop application. By the way, another solution for this kind of objective is to build a PWA, which is a progressive web app using Glazer. Thank you, and I hope to see you in future videos. Take care and Happy New Year. We just started the year 2021.